maybe you've heard the explanation in class and didn't make any sense or whatever. In this lesson, I'm going to do uh, some sample problems for the types of mixed transformations that you might end up dealing with. They'll ask you to either explain it or to graph it, and I'm going to show you both ways to do it. I tend to have a system that I use when I do stretches, uh, when I do writing the equation, and it's almost like I do the opposite when I graph it, just the nature of how it works. So when the first thing I start out with when I'm explaining it is to talk about whether I'm stretching or compressing something. And uh, then I talk about whether I'm reflecting it, and then I'm going to talk about any translations I need to make. So I pick the big ones that are sort of broken down into all those parts, sort of bang for your buck style, as far as that's concerned. So in the first question, it's got this y equals 2 times quantity x minus 2 squared plus 5. Uh, this 2 in front would indicate that the graph is going to be much steeper than, steeper than y equals x squared. So I need to say that I'm stretching it. by a factor of 2. And then I look for a reflection. There isn't one. And then I'm going to talk about any translations that I need to make. Uh, this indicates to me that I'm actually going to move it horizontally. That's left, right. And remember, if it's in parentheses, it's actually going to be the opposite of what you would naturally think. So it's sort of counterintuitive. So instead of going to the left, where negatives usually are, when it's inside that parentheses, I need to go to the right. So I say my translation is two units to the right. And then the outside the parentheses is intuitive, so this would be five units up. And that's all the parts that I need. A lot of times they'll sort of look like uh, more prose based explanations so you won't have like this uh, the colons that I've tried to draw even though they've sort of become a semicolon and some sort of double comma thing. Um, it'll say uh, I stretched the function by a factor of two and then I translated it two units to the right and five units up or whatever it happens to be. That's the explanation of how that sort of thing works. I tend to put it in this format just because it's easier for me to go back and use it when I need it. So let's do a graph of this. You can see it in the top left corner there y equals two times quantity x minus two squared plus five. Now, as my explanation, the way that they end up setting it up, by the way, I'll do the generic y equals x squared. I'll put it way down here, so if you ever need to reference it back, you can have it. And also raise the pen size. So y equals x squared sort of looks like this. And by sort of looks like this, I mean definitely sort of looks like it, because this is terrible. Um, the long and the short of it is I'm not the best at drawing parabolas. Anyway, um, that's the y equals x squared form, uh, just in its most generic. What you're doing is uh, you're going to compress it or uh, stretch it first, then you'll reflect it, and then you move it. But as a graphing scenario, it's hard to do that. Like, you can't just touch it with your fingers and slide it over like it's a touch screen if you're using paper. So it's easier to find the starting point for it. You'll notice I started graphing from the vertex. That's kind of what you want to do. So for me, it makes a heck of a lot more sense just to do that as opposed to try to move it around like you're you know, on your iPad. So I'm going to move my uh, vertex around. This says I need to go up 5. This says I need to go to the right 2. So I'm going to go up 5 and over 2. And I'm going to make my dot kind of right in that general vicinity. I'm actually going to erase the, uh, and hopefully it doesn't erase anything else. Yeah, good. It just erased the uh, x squared form so you can see this one better. So from here, all I need to do is think like, OK, I make sure that I'm stretching it. So instead of going up 1 over 1, I just kind of go up 1 over 2. And then instead of going up 2 and over 4, I would theoretically go up 2 and or, or over 2, I'm sorry, and up 8. I think I mixed those directions up, but you get the idea. Sort of like this. Just do the best you can to show that it's skinnier than a normal x squared. It's the, you know right after New Year's type thing where it got on its diet. And it actually worked, which is pretty rare. Anyway, that's how you would graph the first one. Let's look at another one. So the next one I'm going to do is the y equals negative 3x, uh, negative 3 times the quantity x plus 7 minus 2. So I need to say something about the stretch or compression component. So my stretch, I'm going to say is of a factor of 
3. Now the negative being in front it has nothing to do with stretching or compression. It has to do with the reflection. So I don't add, a, add that in as a component of my stretch. I need to make a separate entry for reflection. Reflection, uh, I could say about or uh, across, but I'm going to say over the x-axis. And then at the end, I want to make some statement about uh, translation. So I'm going to change over to across. I remembered that that's the one that everybody likes in books now. Uh, so my translation statement is that it's going down to and left 7. So I may say 2 units down and 7 units left. Remember, inside that parentheses, it's counterintuitive. So let's graph this thing. So I've got it in the bottom right corner if you're looking for it on the screen somewhere. To graph it, it's sort of, like I said, it's a little bit, uh, it's backwards of your explanation. And in order to think like, well, what's with the y equal reflecting it over the x-axis thing? Um, your vertex is going to be somewhere different. And like we said before, you're going to go down 2 and you're actually going to go to the left 7. So you're going to be here. Should not be reflecting it over x is equals negative 2. But my original explanation of how they translate and flip is based off the parent function. So what they would be doing is starting with the parent function here and they would uh, stretch it out to a factor of 3 and then they would so it would be huge. Then they'd take that, flip it over to down here, then they'd move that over. But you can't do that with a pencil unless you want to spend your life doing it. So it's easier just to, but the flip itself is actually over the x-axis, but graphing it is just done differently because of the nature of the medium. So anyway, I need to flip it over so it's going to be, instead of 1, all of a sudden it's going to be down 3. And instead of uh, 4 down from here, it's actually going to be down 12 from here because 2 and 4 and 2 would be 4 and then all of a sudden you're doing 4 times 3 it would be 12 so you can't go 12 from down here so you end up with this something that looks a little bit like this and probably something that looks a little bit like this and as you can see my drawing is not fantastic but it does have to have the element that I'm sort of hitting right in here. It's supposed to curve more so it can get it back down, but like I said, I'm not the best. So anyway, that's what that graph looks like. And the last one would be the uh, one I have in yellow on this page, and I have it in yellow on this page as well. That's convenient. It has a compression, so this is the first one. Now there is some um, conversation about whether I should say that this has a compression of one-fourth or whether I should say it has a compression of four. Um, and for me, it makes more sense. Saying compression means that I'm going to switch it. I'm taking one and I'm making it a fourth of that original number. So I don't say that I'm compressing it by a factor of a fourth because if I did, I feel in my head that that means that I would be compressing it. Uh, it would almost be like a stretch. It's the opposite. So if I'm saying it's getting smaller and I'm saying I'm doing you know, a fraction of smaller, it actually get bigger. So when I say when I do it, I tend to say that it has a compression. Or I might say that it's compressed by a factor of 4. I guess I could say I'm stretching it by a factor of 1 fourth, but it's sort of counterintuitive to say it that way. If, do I have a reflection? Yes. And pretty much the reflection rule here is that it's across the x-axis. Always. Just it's a general rule for things. And for a translation component, I'm going to try to do it in a way that doesn't run into the other translation, but gives me enough space to where I don't have to use the very bottom of the screen here. My translation here is that I'm going uh, one unit up, and I'm going four units. And remember, it's the opposite of uh, the negative, so it's actually going to the right. I should have added that in. But that's it. Let's graph it and be done. This thing's starting to get long. Uh, so 
once again, uh, it's easier just to start out with the uh, the motion in terms of where I'm going to put the vertex, and you can't really see it because it's covering it. But maybe if I touch the pen over here, it'll actually this thing will slide away. There it is. So plus one, it's going to go up one unit, and it's going to go to the right four units. So right around in here and then it is flipped over because it has a reflection and it's also being compressed by a factor of four so instead of going uh, sort of where it would go up one over one it's actually only going up a four so this is a very shallow style graph so essentially what I'm doing is taking the uh, squares and um, dividing them by four so in the next step it only goes up to one and then when I do this one it actually only goes to like right in here and then it would only go to somewhere like right around in here for the next one. And a similar statement would be made on the opposite side. Right around in here. So I get sort of this thing. And usually you don't have to draw every single point. I was just trying to make it somewhat accurate so you get a general picture. But that's it. It's really flat. It's upside down and it's moved around. So those are all the sample problems that should get you somewhere. At least you have a procedure for writing the information down now and you have a procedure for graphing it. So it's better than nothing.